Live music is back after a couple of very difficult years and joining me to talk about a, a very important music festival coming back to Muskoka is Miranda Mulholland. Miranda, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You are bringing back the Muskoka Music Festival, finally. Yeah, I'm really thrilled. We rebranded in 2019 as the Muskoka Music Festival and then really didn't get to, <laughs> to sort of initiate and do it this time. But we, we're bringing it back, but even more exciting, we also have Dockside Festival of the Arts. So we're running the sister festivals concurrently, uh, and there's just going to be so much to check out. I want to talk about the festival. I know when you, when you launched it uh, a few years ago before COVID, uh, Gravenhurst has such a, a family connection to you. Can you talk to me about that? Absolutely. My great-great-grandfather was Charles Mickle who uh, he was the mayor of Gravenhurst and he also uh, had a lumber yard up in Gravenhurst, which was which gave the, the town the name, the nickname Sawdust City. Um, but also he believed in arts and culture and he had the opera house built on the main street. And so the opera house remains one of our, our key venues for the music festival. Fantastic and such a great setting and, and some renovations happening in the opera house over the last couple of years as well. It's looking absolutely beautiful and comfort wise, 10 out of 10. <laughs> so, so let's break down the festival. What can we expect this year? Yeah, this year is really exciting. Uh, so most of the action during the day is going to be happening at the special events field down by the wharf. So where you go to the Gravenhurst Farmers Market uh, and we'll have a all of the vendors, our artisan vendors, which were it's a jury process. So we, we work really hard to make sure that we have a really interesting assortment of top quality vendors um, and artisans that come from all over. And then we'll also have our music tent down by the wharf. And everything that happens down there as far as programming and artisan village is by donation. We want to keep it affordable for folks and also just make sure that people have a little extra money so they can uh, hopefully pick up some really beautiful artwork. Um, and then also we have our show at the Opera House on Saturday, August 20th, and that's White Horse Juno award-winning duo. They're incredible. If you haven't seen them, they also play, they're the backup band for Sarah McLaughlin. So I don't mean to name drop, but they're a pretty big deal. And uh, opening for them at the Opera House is an amazing artist who also is Juno nominated named I. He just got off tour with Mandy Moore. He's a pretty big deal in the States and he's kind of, um, a bit of a secret up here, so you can be the first to hear him really before he takes off. I'm sure he's going to have an incredible career. And then finally on Sunday, we have uh, Music on the Barge. So we're presenting the Music on the Barge that night. And we have Alex Pangman, who's performed before in Gravenhurst. She's incredible jazz uh, songstress. Um, we've got the Heavyweight Brass Band. Fred Schultz, who is the guy who programs the barge every year. He's amazing. He's going to kick us off with pipes. And our headliner that night is none other than Devin Cuddy, who is uh, the oldest son of Jim Cuddy. You may have heard of Jim Cuddy from Blue Rodeo. So there's lots going on. Uh, most of it's by donation. And then we have also weekend pass and VIP passes, which get you extra things, some artist meet and greets, whiskey tastings, and more. Miranda, as a musician, how excited are you to, to see live music and festivals coming back. How important is it, is it for, for you and, and what you're seeing in the industry? Yeah, it, I mean, the last couple of years have been really, really, uh, really trying for our industry. We were sort of the first out and the last back. Um, it's been really difficult for artists, especially emerging artists who maybe didn't have the fan base to get them through as far as live, on, uh, on live streams and things like that. So it's been really great and welcome to be able to have so many uh, opportunities to, to hire artists to come and play and hopefully people can discover new artists in that emerging category. Um, but yeah, it's been, there's just nothing like live music, you know, there's nothing like sitting or standing with a group of people you don't know, watching an incredible artist perform and knowing that that show wouldn't be the same if you weren't there because the audience is such an integral part of the live music experience. And I think we all discovered that live streams are fine, you know, concert videos are fine, but there's just nothing like being there and present and uh, right in front of and right in part of a show. So it's a real welcome back. I think there's still some tentativeness. Um, and so again, I just wanna, I hope Gravenhurst will embrace this, again, this festival and really embrace all of our new artists 
Um, we've really tried to pair emerging artists with established artists at the workshop stages, which will be down by the wharf so that younger artists will get a chance to perform with maybe artists that they know and love and, and look up to. I think that's really important. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. And I, I agree with you 100%. You know, there's nothing better than, you know, discovering new music and, and celebrating some of our favorites at the same time. And it sounds like you, you're bringing that together perfectly. So we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you later in the month. Amazing. Well, fingers crossed for great weather. <laughs> It's a crying shame Kiss me